All right, thanks for checking out the channel. Um, what better way to start out our first video than installing a pretty much comp spec angle kit. I already installed one side. Uh, as you can see here, this is pretty much the extent of the lock, but I have the bump stop all the way out. I'll get into the install. I'm not gonna really do a deep dive too much. I'm just gonna kind of show a lot of the important things. I mean, anyone installing the kit at this point is, has a pretty solid idea of their suspension on the front of a JZX, so. All right, so I kind of dug into the kit because I was excited. I mean, they did wrap it up real nice. They used, they used a bunch of this foam stuff with saran wrap. It was, it was wrapped up all like nice and tight. But yeah, I kind of dug into it already because I was excited. And I wanted to get one side of the car done before I started the video because I wanted to get any hiccups out of the way. So all this stuff is uh, it's super high quality. It's just, I didn't get it powder coated because I didn't want to wait for the shop to open up because they're currently closed and I didn't really want to wait any longer. But as you can see, all the welds are here, super nice. They lay dimes on anything that they weld. The tension arm is aluminum. The tie rod is aluminum. And I think the offset rack spacers are aluminum too. No, they're steel. So I mean, everything else that needs to be super sturdy is a high grade steel and welded really nicely. And not, not to mention all their bolts are super high grades, high qualities. Like these are the ones that go into the spindle. I mean, anyone who ever had a roll center adapters know that a lot of the bolts they come with are really cheap. I, I'm really not worried about any of this stuff. Yeah, especially these are super high grade and they all come with nylocks too, which is really nice. And when you don't have those type of like ball joint ends where they seal into the suspension, nylocks are kind of the best to have for this kind of suspension. All right, so first I'm gonna install the upper control arm. Uh, to do the upper control arm on the car, you do have to take the coilover out and then you have to separate the spindle from the upper control arm. So I'm gonna take out the cooler real quick and then take the upper control arm out. I debated doing that trick with the electrical tape where you wrap the threads and the tape so the dirt doesn't get in there, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. The arm bolts are really tight, so they leave me no choice but to use a breaker bar. And you're about to see why you had to take the coil over out to get this off. Because these bolts are about six, eight inches long. Oh, it sounds so bad, but it's not. It's <laughs> Whole reason this has happened, we got the hot boys going on. Polishing them yet. Yeah. I gotta hit them with a thousand grit, fifteen hundred, and then polish them. Whatever. Typically, when you do that, you want to leave the castle nut on, but I really don't care about this control arm. This. This got shot anyway. Just for a little quick comparison here. The old one and the new one. It's not even angled the same wheel. No, it's longer. And the thing is with these, I mean, I'm not gonna play with it much because I really don't want to increase my track width, so I'd rather keep them as short as possible. You can adjust these. Like if you extend these out and then extend your lower control arms, I mean, as it is, these add about 75 millimeters to your track width. You can add another couple or a few more millimeters. Then you have this guy too, which I probably won't even play with because I don't know what it does either. But the spindle to get the upper control arm in here. This hole is actually just a little bit too small. I'll show you with this bolt right here. So when you just go to stick it on top here, it kind of gets stuck. And if you're installing this, don't try to screw it in because you'll probably ruin the threads on this bolt. So I got lucky enough that I had a drill bit that was just about the right size. So I'm just going to hold it out just a little bit so I can get that bolt through. Run it reverse so it doesn't get stuck like that. Oh my gosh. 
Does it help when you have noodle arms? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm already through anyway. Yeah, you don't want to do it too much. So you can sit here all day and hollow this thing out, but you only want just a little bit. Just enough for it to get there. Perfect. I'm trying to straighten out this joint real quick just to make it easier. Let me install it. Because it's in the way. Who needs ABS anyway? I'm going to lift the sensor in there because it pretty much seals off the bearing in the hub. If anyone wants the ABS pig harness, pigtail, whatever, you can have it. It'll be at my house for like two days before I chuck it. It is kind of a pain I noticed doing it on the other side. The tolerances are so tight you kind of have to like persuade it in with a hammer. But don't use a metal one. If you have one with a rubber tip, I got lucky I bought one in Japan and I kept it. So I'm going to use that to get these in. I'll show you right here. And the kicker is that these constantly fall out if they're not straight in here. Definitely takes some patience. I'm going to tighten these bolts now because once they're in, you, you can't tighten them. You got to put them in. And. Take it as close as you can, and then give it a couple taps. This is probably the hardest part of putting it in, is just getting these right or lined up. And then you're going to use the OEM bolts for this. This is one of the few times you're going to use the OEM hardware, but this really isn't bad at all. It's Toyota, so it's fine. Yeah. I mean, it's lines are this long, it still looks almost new. See, totally worth the patience. How much angle does this just have? I think it says like up to 70. 70 plus. I pull the, the bump stop all the way out because my brake lines aren't long enough. I have extended brake lines, but I'm not putting them in until this weekend. Because I really don't want to do it in the driveway. So I got the upper control arm in. Um, like I said, it's definitely worth taking time with it because if you cross stud one of these and you have cross studded threads in your frame, you have bigger problems. But uh. I'm not really sure what part to put in next, so I'm just going to shotgun stuff at it till I'm done. Um, this is the offset rack spacer. It's different than the one I saw in the pictures, definitely better too. So, essentially going to put this into the rack, and then the tie rod, uh, wherever, wherever it is, the one they gave me right here, goes in here, and then this will go to the knuckle. I actually bought uh, OEM tie rods, little strengthened ones, because I thought I need them for the kit. I thought this was just an extender, but this is the tie rod itself. And I'm kind of happy it's as bulky as it is because some of the roads around here are pretty bad. So I don't think this will, it'll take a lot to bend this. And the offset rack spacer isn't as sketchy as I thought because there's kind of like these slots in it right here. And then these slots will lock in right there. So it shouldn't be too bad. I actually don't have an Allen wrench big enough for this. But I noticed that a 3 8 drive goes in there pretty good. I mean, I can't tighten it as much as possible. But it's good enough to get it snug so I can get it over on a lift and then stick a real Allen wrench in there and tighten it good. Work control arm in next. Uh, this long bolt right here is actually for the tension rod. But the tension rod goes over the control arm like this. Super tight tolerances. As you can see, it just barely makes it on there. And then it'll sit like this once it's in. The alignment key is another one of the few stock pieces of hardware I'm gonna use. If I can get it in. 
a little persuasion. And I kind of leave everything loose until I get it all kind of assembled and then you kind of can snug everything down. It kind of helps with fitment. And it's, you want to do it especially with this because like I keep saying, the tolerances are just so tight. It literally fits better than OEM or more snug than OEM. So typically uh, with the tension rods, they sit all the way up here. I don't think this one does. I mean, I tried to put it on here before everything else. I tried tapping it on a little bit. It only goes about this far. So if you're installing this and it looks kind of weird to you, um, just feel comfortable because I'm doing it too. <laughs> it comes to this little piece right here. I assume that this is supposed to go like this on there. So it doesn't max out before it's tightened, if that makes any sense. Oh, I forgot what this goes to. <laughs> oh, as you can see right here, there's three spots for the coilover. Um, I referenced a picture that they had the coilover put in the first hole right here. Beefy tie rod. Like I said, I was worried about the potholes before the kit came in, but now seeing it in person, I don't think I'm gonna have any problems. As long as I don't hit nothing crazy. I don't remember how I did it on the other side, but I'm just gonna take this apart to put it on. It just makes sense at the moment. Top of thread. There we go. Oh yeah, it's opposite thread. Yeah, it's kind of confusing. Like some things on here are opposite threaded. I just try very delicately both ways until something grabs. Definitely have to be gentle. You don't want to mess up these threads. You putting the coil over in? Yeah, I gotta remember how I took it out. What kind of coil over is that? D Max Super Streets. Bought them in Japan. I think, my personal opinion, I've actually bought two, three sets. I think I, I definitely got two, maybe three. Definitely the best coil over you can get for this car besides DG5. I think I'm gonna do this for the next. So coil overs are in. Yeah. All I have to do now is just put the spindle on, connect it to the upper, connect the knuckle to the tie rod, put the sway bar end link in, put the caliper on, and then the rotor. Rotor and caliper at the same time. I can't tell if it's crossed it or not. Thing looks mean too. When I first got into these cars, like, I was just surprised how easy everything was. If you know what, what the car could do. You put the rotor on. Yeah, and the caliper. This is the trickiest part. It's looking nice though. I mean, as long as you keep everything loose, kind of just install it in sync. It's not terrible. But anyone with regular brakes really won't have an issue. Like the stock IS300 brakes are obviously universal with these. Like if I had a problem, I was just gonna trade someone for stock brakes. But I'm happy I don't have to. 